The Arcane Mage is the most fun caster in Cataclysm by far, changed my mind. Tier 11, easy. Tier 12, top of the meters. Tier 13, we do not talk about Tier 13. These are the talents you're gonna be using 99% of the time. You can make an argument that getting rid of improved arcane explosion over here for improved blink over there is better for some fights, but I wouldn't hold my breath, it is not very good. For Prime Bliss, we are gonna take Arcane Blast for 3% Boom Boom, Arcane Missiles for 5% Crit, and Mage Armor for 20% more mana. And trust me, boy, on God, you are gonna need mana. For Major Gliss, we are gonna take the Arcane Power, Blink, and Evocation Gliss for survivability because there is no real DPS boosting here. And for Minor Gliss, we are gonna take Mirror Image because it looks cool and the rest are useless, just take whatever. For races, you have only one viable alternative as Alliance, and that is Gnome for mana. As you will see in a minute, mana turns into extra damage for us. But luckily for Horde, you have four, yes, four equally viable races to choose. Orc for spell power active when you pop your cooldowns, Troll for haste when you're popping your cooldowns, Blood Elf for extra mana, and Goblin for 1% haste and the super broken rocket jump. It is basically another free blink. Remember that as an arcane mage you can't move much when you're doing your rotation, so any mobility can and will turn into more DPS in a fight. I would say the best is Goblin, but the others are pretty close. Your stat priority is the standard for most casters in Cataclysm, Intellect is your most important stat, not only for the spell power and crit, but as an arcane mage, the bigger mana pool you have, the more bonus damage you are gonna get, we're gonna go over that in a minute. Then your 17% hit cap, then haste, your haste cap is pretty complicated, but basically when you are full buffed, If your Arcane Blast has a cast time of 1 second, you hit the cap, then Mastery, then Crit. Before we start, remember your buffs. We take Mage Armor for Mana Region, super important, Arcane Intellect, and drop Focus Magic on another caster. Every time they crit, you get crit. That's pretty good. Now we are gonna talk about your rotation. We have two rotations as an arcane mage. You have what I call the pumping phase, and then you have the dumping phase. To understand what I'm talking about, I have to understand how the main mechanic of your class works. First is your mastery. Basically, you do more damage the more mana you have left. So you are incentivized to have as much mana as possible. Second is arcane in power, your 2 minute cooldown. Basically, when you pop it, you do 20% more damage, but your abilities cost more mana too. So you want to be as close to full mana as possible when arcane power is not up, but when you have it on, you want to dump as much mana as possible to do as much value as possible from it. And after arcane power runs out, you want to go back to full mana as fast as possible too. So you understand now why we got two phases. Your first phase is the dumping phase phase you are gonna start the pool at 100% mana and your cooldowns are gonna be up. Well actually if you wanna really break it down you wanna do like your non-dumping rotation for about 5 seconds just to make sure that all the debuffs are on the boss first and then you start but whatever. For the dumping phase we're gonna do arcane power, every single trinket, time warp if your raid leader will let you and volcanic potion too. We start hard and then your rotation is flame orb on cooldown and then you spam arcane blast. Yep. Yeah, that, that's it. That, that's pretty easy, yeah. Arcane Blast exponentially gets more mana intensive every time you cast it. So in the rare case, you get below 35% mana before your Arcane Power runs out. You can use Arcane Missiles every time you get a free proc of them uh, to save some mana. This should only happen during Bloodlust unless you took a lot of haste. You sometimes see trolls running into this problem, but it's not common. It shouldn't be happening. Once you have ended arcane power, you wanna evocate immediately and go back to full mana. And now you enter the mana pumping phase. You are gonna try to stay as close to 100% as possible the whole time. For that we are gonna cast Flame Orb on cooldown, remember that the Born can proc free arcane missiles and clear casting too, and we are gonna be doing two arcane blasts, then if we got an arcane missiles proc we're gonna cast that, and otherwise we are gonna fill with arcane barrage, 
which is much lower damage, but it is almost mana free. If you see that you are going under 90% mana, you wanna do way less arcane blasts and replace them with arcane barrage, as going below 90% is a big no-no. And as soon as your arcane power comes back up, you start with the dumping phase all over again. Now your AOE rotation is arcane explosion. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, okay, to be fair, if you are fighting 3 or less mobs, it is mathematically worth it to do 4 arcane blasts and then do arcane explosion to get the damage bonus, but if you are fighting more, you don't. Since you can move while you have arcane explosion, you are gonna probably be supposed to kite the adds for the raid, that is a common task of the arcane mage, and for that you're gonna be using frost nova and cone of wind to slow them and root them so you can have an easier time doing that. But that's basically your whole rotation, it's pretty fun. Now, aside from arcane power and evocation, which are a fixed part of your rotation, your only DPS cooldown is presence of mind, which is another DPS boost, but you can't use it with arcane power, so it is just a and boost on your pumping face and that's it. You do have a decent amount of utility abilities though. Blink lets you move fast, it is a vital ability when you cannot move at all like an arcane mage. Counter spell is an interrupt on a super long cooldown. Spell still lets you steal buffs from the bosses, they are a mechanic for some bosses but it is almost not used in PvE. Slow is just another curse of tongues. Time Warp is another Bloodlust, Cone of Cold is another AOE Slow, and Frost Nova is an AOE Root. Once again, you're gonna use this for kiting adds. Invisibility is a threat reset, it is good for chasing some abilities, but threatening Cataclysm is not very important, so yeah. And Polymorph is your classic single target CC, you are probably only gonna use this for CC mobs in trash pools in heroic dungeons. <laughs> For gems, like any other caster, we are gonna take Brilliant, Queen's Garnet in every socket for Intellect, and Burning Shadow Spirit Diamond in Meta Sockets for even more Intellect. You have a lot of viable professions as a mage, actually. Your best one is tailoring, but blacksmithing, jewel crafting, alchemy, enchanting, engineering, leatherworking, and the inscription are other very good options. Remember that you can't get the bonus for leatherworking and the inscription at the same time, so do not take both of them. For consumables, we are gonna take Severed Sage Fish Head for food, Flask of the Draconic Mind for more intellect, and every time we are on the Arcane Power phase, we are gonna pop a Volcanic Potion for maximum intellect. Like always, here is a list of your best in slot enchants for every item, and if you do not want me to proc clear casting and hit you in the ear with a wooden spoon for no additional mana cost, subscribe and leave a like and join the Discord, we are gonna do a guide for every spec, and thank you for watching!